The Obi-Wan Kenobi show really has it all. Utter stupidity. Obi-Wan looking pathetic. Vader looking pathetic. A couple of good things. Yes, I know, I don't believe it either. And huge galaxy sucking plot holes that make everyone look stupid, as well as cancelling out the original trilogy. Where is he? We have probes out, we're tracking all possible exits. So you could say it's the perfect example of modern Hollywood. This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. Now let's start with the biggest shock of all. A couple of things I really liked. Well, more like a couple of scenes. If you look past how stupid Obi-Wan is. Maybe it was a lie. I knew it. I never should have trusted him. We don't know if maybe... No one is coming here, Leia. You and that little girl work really well together. Are you my real father? The scene where Obi-Wan talks about Padme and remembering glimpses of his family and maybe even having a brother was the first time I'd felt anything in this show. It was the first thing that felt anything like Star Wars. To be honest, it's probably the first time I had any emotion that wasn't anger or disappointment since the opening of The Force Awakens. I still have glimpses. My mother's shawl, my father's hands. I remember a baby. A baby? Yes, I think I had a brother. It felt like when Obi-Wan talked about his brother, his character grew a fraction, instead of what usually happens in this show, where his story retracts like a penis in a cold pool. I was in the pool! We learned something about him in a nice way that didn't shove a hot poker up the ass of everything we already knew about him. It was a glimpse of what could have been. But don't worry, that doesn't last long. We're soon back with Reva. I just spoke with Lord Vader. I also liked him having the visions of Anakin. After making the effort to hire Ewan and Hayden again, you think the creators of this show would have at least made one flashback that showed them as close friends. It could have added so much to the story. George wanted to tell us they were like brothers. You were my brother, Anakin! But he didn't do a great job showing it. This could have been an opportunity for us to see them as close friends. But anyway, the good times don't last long. We have to rush back to every fucking thing being stupid. Which brings us to the third sister. Send out the probes. Do it now. Third sister is an idiot. Where is he? We have probes out. We're tracking all possible exits. Last episode, Obi-Wan gets on an unmanned delivery spacecraft. Reva is standing next to the craft when it leaves. She is also in a city that is under the Empire's control. Whoever runs that facility must know where that ship is going. And not roughly, but exactly where it's going. So why didn't Reva just go and ask them? We have probes out. We're tracking all possible exits. Send out the probes. Or better still, get the people who control the deliveries to turn the ship around and deliver Obi-Wan and Leia back to Reva. We will find you! In this episode, we see Leia complaining about how slow the bloody ship is. Can't you make this thing go any faster? Reva could have found out where they're going, got on a ship, and hyperdrived her ass all the way there before they got there. You do realise if the delivery ship that Obi-Wan and Leia got on doesn't have hyperdrive, that they both would have starved to death. I mean, some of these things on their own might sound trivial, but it is basic storytelling. It's the least we should expect. But in the Obi-Wan series, the stupidity is relentless. Now, I'll quickly give it one more compliment. Some scenes in this show look fucking amazing. It's just a shame that they didn't spend as much time on the script as they did on the visual orgasm. <laughs> Why the stormtroopers are just out wandering on foot looking for a Jedi is a mystery. They should have just gone to where the ship was going to land. But I do like that they aren't even given a description or a name of the person they are looking for. It's just a Jedi. Looking for a Jedi. Where do they begin looking with that much information? Jedi come in all shapes and sizes. Fucking like Yoda is a Jedi. They'd have to stop and talk to every bloody creature they see. And if Reva was smart enough to narrow it down to it being a man with a child, why aren't the stormtroopers even considering that they might be looking for these two? These two people that just happen to be out in the middle of nowhere where they're looking for a Jedi. A Jedi? Out here? Oh, no, we'll find them. We always do. They know what they're doing, Leia. <laughs> he says the fucking name. He trying to tell me that Reva didn't even pass the names onto these guys? How fucking dumb do you have to be to accept this shit? It's fucking basic storytelling. A five minute script discussion would have fixed this problem. I'm having the book of Boba Fett flashbacks. The bloody story doesn't add up from one episode to the next. <sighs> Last episode, Reva sent a three-dimensional image of Obi-Wan to every bounty hunter on a planet so they could find him. Bounty hunters she had no connection to, but to the soldiers that are under her command, she just sends the instruction, find Jedi. 
No 3D image, no name, no description, no information on the little girl being with him, no information whatsoever. Just fine, Jedi. Just keep your eyes open. Imagine how many real-life criminals would be caught if the only information police were given was the word suspect. Then add to that the suspect could be anything from a frog up. White tank top, black shorts. White tank top, black shorts. You're wearing the same clothes that were seen running from that vehicle. Then when the stormtroopers think they've caught him, they have to get a probe sent in to ID him. The technology in this world constantly changes to suit the dumb scene we're in. Because for 40 plus years, we've seen people receiving 3D pop-up video calls and video messages in Star Wars. The fucking last episode had it. But now all of a sudden we're in the Wild West where the local probe sheriff has to bring along a wanted poster and hold it up next to the suspect to identify them. So stupid. Thank you. Kenobi is all that matters now. Is that understood? Yes, my lord. Vader's number one goal is to find Obi-Wan, and Reva doesn't even think to send a name and a photo to the people that are looking for him. Looking for a Jedi. And Vader's considering giving her the top job. Prove yourself, and the position of Grand Inquisitor is yours. Thank God Reva wasn't in charge of looking for Laden. She would have just sent out... Find the Arab. Do you have a photo or a name or at least a description? Of who we're looking for? Yes, we do. So every time you find an Arab, we will send someone to bring the photo to see if it is them. Then, if it's them, we will then tell you his name. Uh, sorry, so could we just have the photo and name now? It'll make the job a lot easier. No. What the fuck's wrong with you? A couple of strays I found. Thought you might want to check them out. Oh, thank God Moleface has a bit of a brain. Because these stormtroopers didn't have a clue. And I do like that stormtrooper being cut in half by the gate. It was a nice touch. Let's take a brief break to thank today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Now, a lot of people ask how they can be as cool and interesting as Robot Head. Well, the first thing you're going to need is a good VPN. So you have the freedom to watch whatever you want. And not just any VPN, you need to get yourself Private Internet Access. Why did you choose Private Internet Access, oh great Robot Head? Well, I'm glad you asked. Private Internet Access will allow you to watch all of your favourite content from any place in the world, including Disney+, Plus, Netflix and Amazon. And no one can stop you or spy on you. Private Internet Access does this by hiding your IP address and encrypting your internet connection. You could almost say they're magically making the internet gods. Think your device is in any given country of your choosing. Can't get enough of that sophisticated British humour? Well, now your TV's in London, so you can connect to the BBC. Need more anime in your life? Of course you do, you crazy weirdo. Well, with a simple click of a button, your computer is now in Tokyo so you can watch Japanese Netflix, where no one will judge you. On top of this, you can connect up to 10 devices across all platforms with one subscription. Go to privateinternetaccess.com slash robothead and you'll get a whopping 82% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.11 a month. Plus, you'll get an extra three months absolutely free. They even have a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support, so it's totally risk-free. Sign up to private internet access today and safely watch what you want to watch. <laughs> Walk around, you idiot. This is what happens when you are rushing out a show and no one cares enough to oversee the whole project. Obviously, the people who wrote this scene and the people who shot this scene didn't bother telling the people who were working on the digital backgrounds that it needed to look like he couldn't just walk around the gate, you idiots. I thought he was trying to get the gate open so he could take the vehicle, but no. <laughs> He just wants to walk through. How fucking stupid do you want to make this guy? And again, this problem could have been fixed in the edit, but that would have taken the editors to give a shit. And to stay consistent with the way tech just comes and goes in this show, Obi-Wan's ability to use the force just comes and goes. He now just bows down when told to like a scared rabbit, even though he's packing a blaster, a lightsaber, and the ability to use the force. It's really hard to believe this is the same character, but that's because it's not the same fucking character. And I feel I must point this out again, just in case you didn't watch the last video. Leia is only a fugitive because Obi-Wan keeps taking her with him. This sympathizer could have hidden Obi-Wan and said she found a little girl who says her father is an Imperial Senator who works with the Empire. She'd be a fucking hero returning the kid. But no, the writers are too dumb to understand their own story. Leia fight Empire. Leia always fight Empire. Listen to the Empire. Absolutely. We love the Empire. At her age, living the privileged life as a royal, and only ever knowing that her father works and meets with the Empire on a regular basis, yes, she probably is quite fond of them. She'd actually have no reason to think they're bad. How she got so streetwise is a real mystery. I'm Luma. This is my friend, my father. This is my father, Orden. But it's really because these dumbass modern writers don't understand that characters can be quite different when they are young children and they've had no life experience. 
What is this place? We have safe houses like this throughout the galaxy. You're not the first Jedi to come through here. It's quite amazing that there are so many Jedi and Force-sensitive people getting around. Even a sparsely populated planet like this still have enough people to move that they've built a hidden underground tunnel network that's been very well constructed. You think if all those Force-sensitive and Jedi people got together, they'd be pretty powerful. But somehow after all this smuggling of people, which over 10 years must be in the hundreds if not thousands, Luke and Obi-Wan are the only ones to come forward to help defeat the Empire. Really makes all the other smuggled Jedi and Force-sensitive people seem like real selfish bastards. Quinlan was here. Yeah, he helps now and again. Smuggling younglings. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Nothing like seeing our hero Jedi cower behind a door, watching innocent people die just to save his own skin. The guy that used to say Sith were his specialty. Sith Lords are our speciality. And would run into a fight, now hides behind innocent men and women. And he has no plan whatsoever, except for just pissing in his pants. He literally runs away after seeing a woman on the ground screaming while she's being tortured. Lucasfilm fucking hate the Jedi. And why is he so fucking scared of Vader? He is acting like he has post-traumatic stress disorder, as if he was the one that lost the fight at a partner. He's also watching like he's never seen these fucking powers before. Now, if anyone is going to be nervous about seeing the other, it should be Vader. Obi-Wan kicked his fucking ass last time. And that's when he still had arms and legs. Personally, I think if you went into a fight full of confidence as the young pretty boy, married to a young wife who's about to give birth to your children, and you come out of that fight looking like a German sausage, and your wife is dead and as far as you know the kids are too and just to rub salt into your many many wounds the guy that did all this to you hasn't even got a fucking scratch you might be just a little concerned what he's going to do to you next time i mean it'd be pretty hard to top when obi-wan stole his lightsaber and walked off and let him die a slow painful horrible death obi-wan could have ended his misery or taken him with him but obi-wan decided to say fuck you i'm gonna take real good care of your missus don't you worry real good care of her are you my real father? I wish I could say I was. Alec Guinness never looked the slightest bit scared of Vader. Why would he be? The young Obi-Wan never looked scared of anyone. It's not the Jedi way to be scared. But for some reason, Lucasfilm have to make middle-aged Obi-Wan a scared puddle of piss who is fucking useless and runs and hides from danger. Now, where have we seen that before? Go away! And please, stupid TV show creators, hire better editors or have more control over what is shot. The tunnel sequence and Vader and Obi-Wan's fight are all over the fucking shop. Feels like Leia is running up and down the one tunnel, but she keeps ending up in different locations. And Vader and Obi-Wan keep skipping around in all different directions, but keep ending up in front of each other. It's a fucking mess. <laughs> And who would have dreamt that bringing Vader and Obi-Wan back together could be so lackluster? No tension, no emotion, no skill, and no sense of direction. Again with the stupidity. Vader starts a fire. Vader blows out the fire. Sympathizer starts the fire again. Vader is now blocked by the fire. I'm really starting to think Lucasfilm have become a special needs hire because that all happened within 10 seconds and no one questioned it. Remember Vader's main mission in life, one he has spent 10 years thinking about, is to capture the guy who's 20 feet away from him and he decides not to put the fire out again or use the force to drag Obi-Wan back to him. Fucking moronic. And people defend this shit. Now remember, there's a difference between enjoying it because you don't give a shit and defending it. But imagine if mindless consumers didn't defend amateur written trash. We might actually get something good. But let's put the brakes on for a minute. Reva and Vader didn't have to go through any of this. If they just thought about the massive plot hole staring them in the face. Talking about plot holes in this show is a bit redundant. The whole story is a fucking huge galaxy consuming black hole. But this is a good one that fucks up the whole series. We've seen Reva admit to the other Inquisitors that she took Leia to get Obi-Wan to come out of hiding. I found a link between him and Organa in the archives. I used the girl as bait. It's a ridiculous leap of logic, but that's what they went with. Leia's family have decided to not tell anyone she is missing, but yet Obi-Wan has turned up to rescue her. Kenobi is the last ember of a dying age. Extinguish him. This would cause a very serious problem for Leia's family. The Inquisitors now know for certain that Leia's father is in touch with Obi-Wan. And they all know Obi-Wan is heading to Alderaan to return the girl. Add to this, the show is pushing a little schoolyard bitch fest between the Inquisitors. 
You would kidnap an Imperial Senator's child? We've done worse. You have no right. Why wouldn't the other Inquisitors race to Vader to explain the situation? Or better still, why wouldn't Vader come to this conclusion himself? The very first scene of this third episode should have been Vader landing on Alderaan, arresting the family for treason, and torturing them until Obi-Wan turned up. There is absolutely no reason to chase or search for Obi-Wan. That's not a random child. Everyone knows where he's taken her. And it's not like Vader wouldn't torture the family. We just saw him kill a couple of innocent people to prove a point. And as we know, in a couple of years, they blow up the whole fucking planet, murdering millions because Leia tells a lie. Torturing two people would be a breeze. And if he didn't want to torture Leia's parents, he could just have Reva do the mind meld and find out where Obi-Wan lives and all about the two children. This knowledge the writers have decided to insert in a time that sits before the original trilogy, the knowledge that Vader knows there's a link between Leia's dad and Obi-Wan means we should probably delete the original trilogy, because now it just doesn't make any sense. The so-called writers. Look, I don't even like calling them that. It's offensive to people who can actually write. These, in name only, hack writers not only break the original trilogy and prequels with their hackery, they also fuck up their own series with their idiotic story. Now, that's a special kind of talent. What have you become? I am what you made me. Ah!